Hey everybody, welcome to part 5 of our uh, Radio Basics troubleshooting and restoration. Hope everybody's doing well. I've been away for uh, quite a bit here, almost three weeks. Uh, I've had a whole bunch of stuff going on, been really busy with work, really busy with my gigs, and uh, really busy with other stuff in the house, including one of our pets that we lost. Um, we had a feral cat named Kit Kat, and here's a picture of her. You'll see it right here. Um, she was feral, um, and uh, we, we started coming around to eat, and um, one day she brought her two kittens with her, and we decided that we were going to give them a home, so we, you know, we, we trapped them, we had them fixed, got the shots and all that stuff, and brought them into the house, and um, you know, obviously being feral, took them a while to adjust. What we didn't know is that um, they had uh, feline leukemia. The two kittens died pretty quickly. Uh, once they came in, probably less than a year. The mother, Kit Kat, was a carrier, and we've had her now for about four years, five years, so she did pretty well. Um, but, you know, the, the disease caught up with her, and we lost her pretty quickly. Um, overnight, basically, she stopped eating, and, um, and we, had to, uh, we had to bring her and, and have her uh, taken, you know, put down, obviously, so she didn't suffer. So, um, been, been really busy with that and of course um, because we believe in you know giving animals um, a chance we adopted <laughs> you ready for this three more kittens so um, so we've got now three little babies that we're raising here and they're little I'll show you uh, a picture of them Um, but yes, yeah, so we've got our hands full a little bit, but back to our part five. So let's, uh, again, as we've been doing in this series, let's recap where we, what we did in part four. So if you remember in part four, we were having a problem with the B+. And let's identify what we covered. So we talked about finding the root cause of our problems. And of course we found that there was a solder bridge which basically took out our rectifier tube. We learned that if you do a visual inspection before ripping parts out, that's always the best way. You'll typically be able to find things, um, if at all possible. And then we decided we were going to check our voltages. Uh, and um, we said, if by checking the voltages, it gives us a baseline as to where we are. Um, and um, you know, we said that we would use a chart, which we created, and we showed you the chart. And the chart basically told you um, what the voltages were prior to me replacing the caps, which I'll show you in a moment. So the, so the gist of it is, um, you know, be methodical about this stuff. Don't just start ripping out stuff, um, and you'll be in good shape. So let's take a look under the radio at this point. Um, what I did do is I told you in the last episode that I was going to be uh, replacing the capacitors, which I did. And let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so let's zoom in here. So you'll notice that I did replace all of these old caps that were in here, and if you remember in the last episode, I mentioned that all of these caps that were in here were .47s when the radio doesn't call for any of them. <laughs> so someone someone had a bunch of old caps laying around and threw them in there. Um, so we've now got the proper values installed. One thing that I've discovered while uh, doing this is before I change the caps out, I tried sort the shortwave band. You know, you got to try the shortwave band at night. Um, I tried the shortwave band, I got absolutely nothing out of it. And I learned that by replacing this cap, I actually fixed the shortwave, um, which, uh, which was good. This cap here, which is a .05, is bad. So just by replacing that cap, we got our shortwave to work. So what I don't want you to do is confuse this with ripping parts out for the sake of it, right? This truly gets us back to baseline, right? Um, baseline of what the engineers were thinking when they designed the radio and produced it and built it. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about um, a couple of things here. So when you have a problem, right, if you remember with our solder bridge and our rectifier tube, how do you find it? There's really two methods of doing it. One is the shotgun approach, right, we spoke about that, where you just start replacing stuff. And, you know, you test all the resistors, the coils, you know, everything, you replace it out of, stack, out of spec, but Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't, 
right? You could you could do all the checking you want. You're not always going to find it. So what we need really need to do is a more controlled method of understanding uh, what's wrong in the radio. So as you know, that there's two sections in a radio. There's the RF section and the audio section. And typically what we want to do is we want to follow the signal path, right? And we want to only check the necessary parts as we go into each section. All right, so the signal path, as you know, comes in from the antenna and goes out to the speaker. That's really the start and the finish. Now there's a really simple way that you can do this when you're troubleshooting your radio to figure out if the audio section is working. And that the best place to start that's in the middle of the radio, right? So you'll know, do you need to work backwards to the RF or forwards to the audio. Very simple. And I'll show you on the schematic here when I'm talking about where that line of differentiation is. So take a look right here. Okay. So the way that we're gonna uh, we're gonna check this out is you know we're basically gonna start right at the volume control. And what you could typically do with the uh, with the radio turned on is if you take your uh, voltmeter and you take your um, your red probe and connect it to the wiper, the center of the uh, volume pot, and don't connect the black lead to anything, you should hear a really loud 60 cycle hum coming from the speaker. And that's because you know the meter and its leads are picking up the 60 cycle hum from the electrical wiring that's all around us. If you get the hum, you can assume that the audio section is good, right? If you don't get the hum, then you have a, you have a general idea that the audio portion is bad. Right, so that gives you an idea which direction you need to go in. So what we're going to do in part six, when we really start digging into it, is we're going to start troubleshooting the audio section, and that's going to, of course, be assuming that we didn't hear the 60 cycle hum. In this radio, we know it's working. In part six, we're going to start troubleshooting the RF section, and we're going to assume that we got it, and then we're going to show you what um, what things you can check minimally to understand where your problems are. So let's do that test with the center um, center uh, terminal of the wiper of the volume pot, and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. So let me set that up, and we'll be right back. Okay, we have our radio on. I'm going to warn you up front. This is going to be loud, so if you're wearing headphones, be careful. So the radio's on. Now you'll hear we have a definite hum in the radio at this point, and um, that's a problem with my voltage in my house. If I put this in another um, outlet, I'm not going to hear that. But let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's my meter. Here's my two leads. I'm holding this one and not connect that to anything. Okay? I'm going to take this lead and put it on the wiper of the volume pot. And here comes the noise. Here you go. You hear that? Now what that tells you is that the, um, the audio section works. It's a little hard to grab this thing. There it is. So that proves that the RF section is working. So that's the uh, that's a really simple test. Um, I've got a little bit of squeal going on here too, and I think that's going to get solved when I do the alignment. Um, so this radio is still a bit noisy, so we're not close to it yet, but at least we know that we've got an RF section that works, right? Which is cool, and and an, a, an audio section. There's the radio working. All right, let's get to the next step. All right, so the next step here is going to be checking the voltages again because we did make some changes in the radio. I don't expect that they're going to be very different. Um, I think they're going to be pretty much the same. And I want to explain one thing here. So when we checked the voltages last time, I had indicated that on the 6SQ7 tube, on pin 6, uh, I was showing 105.6 volts, which seemed a little bit high. Um, but one of the things that um, I was educated on is, you know, when these voltages are put on a schematic, you don't really know what the test conditions are. You don't know if they've got a station tuned, a strong station, a weak station, no station, a signal generator, an audio generator. They don't tell you any of that on the uh, schematic. They just tell you, here's the voltage. So you can get varied voltages on these things. It's really nothing to be overly concerned about. Um, that's something that I really didn't consider in the last episode when I spoke about that. So um, 
I did check these voltages quickly before I uh, started up the camera and they are um, pretty close to where we were last time. I'll see if I can get this in the screen here. And the one I want to show you is uh, pin 6 of the 6SQ7. And let me get my light so I can see. And that will be right here. And I've got 109.1. So it actually went up a little bit, but I've, I don't know if you saw that because of the light. Um, it's actually 106.1. Sorry about that. All right, so I've checked all the other voltages around and everything is really the same and straight. So everything's good. So we're going to consider that, um, that this is working and our voltages are good. And the next step uh, that we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot the, uh, the audio section. All right, so I showed you on the schematic where the differentiation is between the two, the audio and the RF. Um, and in our next episode, we're going to be doing that. So I wanted to get this, uh, this, this video up today, a quick video today, and, uh, and just kind of show you where we're at. I still see some resistors in here that we're going to have to change, like this old dog bone right here. Uh, but I'm purposely not doing it yet because I want to prove why it needs to be changed. One other thing that I want to mention here is on this tone control, there's a disc, ceramic disc cap here of 0.47 again. Uh, which is for our tone and that's um, that's I don't think is what it's called for here on the tone control on this thing um, and I want to uh, go through that and make sure that I identify that correctly and replace it with the proper value so we're going to do that as well and that comes right off of that tone control and it goes over to the 6SQ7 pin 4 so um, we're going to make sure that we uh, we identify that correctly as well um, and that we replace it with whatever we need to replace it with all right, so uh, I'm going to end this video here. It's really quick and dirty and simple. And uh, in the next episode, which I promise won't be three weeks from now, it'll be sooner, we're going to start going through the troubleshooting of this thing and get it to a good spot. So until then, I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's having a great day. And I'm going to go upload this. And by the way, let me turn this off. YouTube is acting strange again, so I'm unable to upload videos the traditional way, so I have to do it in a roundabout way, which is really annoying but we will get the video uploaded to you. Okay, everybody have a great Sunday. Take care.